Marks has a long history of research in a wide variety of areas, but currently there are five key areas. Cancer and inherited cancer, inflammatory bowel disease, anorectal research, intestinal failure, innovative research that is advancing the frontiers of medicine. The Polyposis Registry was started in 1924 uh, and that means that we have ha information that we've collected over a very long period of time and we also have a large number of patients with polyposis syndromes. We're the only specialist unit in the UK with an interest in this and in fact we're the second biggest unit in the world. We're trying to identify a gene that in addition to the polyposis gene seems to be acting in families that means that certain people develop desmoids and some don't. If we can do that, that allows us to predict who will and who will not develop these desmoids, which will help plan the treatment of the individual patients. So in the Polyposis Registry, we're working towards building a future free from the fear of inherited bowel cancer and the other associated problems that go with that. My particular area of research interest is uh, inflammatory bowel disease, really everything from the bench to the bedside. So looking at the cause of these diseases uh, all the way through to novel treatments and then really importantly empowering patients to help them to manage and cope with these difficult diseases. We've got a huge aim and ambition to understand more about the basic biology of the human gut, to know which parts of the gut do certain jobs, work out more about the compartmentalization of the gut, uh, and our ultimate aim is to really try and tailor therapies to different parts of the gut in different patients to personalise therapy. So we have a team of people to help uh, manage patients with inflammatory bowel disease and at St Mark's it's a really unique team. I think when patients are diagnosed, particularly with inflammatory bowel disease, which is what I deal with, um, they're often very scared, um, they're often very angry um, and they're often very emotional and very upset. The aim of the clinical nurse specialist teams here at St. Mark's is to provide prompt, efficient, quality patient care on an individual case basis. We want to create a future free of the fear of inflammatory bowel disease, and fear is really important. If we could diminish the fear for our patients, that would be an amazing target. The original name for St. Mark's Hospital was St. Mark's Hospital for Fistula. And we think that using molecular techniques, we might understand in a far better way what it is that makes people develop fistulas. Most of the clinical research we do needs to have a full-time uh, clinical research worker working usually for two or three years for an MD or PhD. The sums are quite high. So you might find that a three-year fellowship with a research fellow with on costs would be of the order of 200 to 250,000 pounds. The research I'm doing is seeking to build a future free from the fear, pain, incontinence of anal fistula. Professor Phillips is a great teacher and a great role model and for somebody like him to be my supervisor, it's a great honour for anyone to have. I owe my whole career and my profession to St Mark's Hospital and I am delighted to see the hospital is continuing that tradition in training and educating the young. St Mark's Hospital is a rich learning environment where we are encouraged to be the best and we are fully supported to achieve that. Intestinal rehabilitation research is trying to build a future free from the fear of intestinal failure. So intestinal failure is when the bowel is not working sufficiently for patients to be able to absorb the nutrition or the fluid that they need to have. And we then need to give that to patients artificially. St Mark's have looked after my care for a number of years now. I had Crohn's disease. I have to survive on TPN, which is liquid nutrition. And it's plugged in to me in from this pack. This is my life support system on my back. And I'm currently on a kayaking trip from Skipton in North Yorkshire 
down to Bristol. This is 420 miles. And I'm raising money for some research which has been carried out at St. Mark's. It's not going to help me, you know, it's too late for me. But a couple of years ago at the St. Mark's dinner, I met John Leonard Jones, who played a major part in getting TPN uh, introduced into the UK. You know, so it was the research that he did probably 20, 30 years ago or whatever that has kept me alive. So I like to think that the research that I'm raising for now will keep people in 10, 20 years alive as well. The ultimate goal has to be that we get some stem cells from a patient, that we would implant that into a scaffold that we have developed and grow up a segment of bowel that could then be implanted into a patient. Patients who need this do not have any other option. We can make two centimetres, but two centimetres is not clinically relevant. We need approximately 50 centimetres. That's where the challenge is. Our next biggest hurdle is really to get the cells and scaffold together, scale it up to produce functional tissue. That could stop the need for intravenous nutrition for that patient. That would dramatically change the lives of, of those sorts of patients. My special role at St Mark's is to diagnose and treat colonic disease with the aid of one of these, which as you can see, reaches the parts that others can't. Now it's a complex and difficult to use device, but I'm proud to say that with the help of our supporters, we have improved the standards of colonoscopy in the UK through our multiple training courses and by the generation of high quality teaching materials available to all. But it's my vision to create a dedicated colonoscopic surgical unit, the CSU, bringing together the skills of laparoscopic surgery and therapeutic endoscopy to develop innovative, low-risk, intraluminal endoscopic surgical techniques. The reason we need the CSU is that with the advent of bowel cancer screening and increased access to diagnostic endoscopy, there's been a large increase in the number of flat and sessile colonic polyps which are being diagnosed, some of which harbour the very earliest stages of cancer. Here, each new polyp case will be reviewed in detail at a multidisciplinary meeting so that a tailored package of care can be established for each individual patient. This is the future of minimally invasive surgery and a future we want for our patients. One of my main interests in the last 20 years as a consultant has been training future surgeons. And because of that, I was involved in setting up the national training program in laparoscopic colorectal surgery. It's the only program like it in the world. We have about a thousand visitors come to us from all over the world every year. We train the world. I think the skills that um, I'm coming out with are invaluable for my future career. The thing I probably get most satisfaction out of is to see a trainee undertake a, a complex procedure really well. Research is so important in surgery as it's the way in which we introduce new techniques, testing them to prove that they're actually improving outcome. We now see people presenting with early cancer much more frequently and we even see 40 to 50% of our patients from the bowel screening programme with early cancer. Clearly we've got some way to go before we can have a future free from the fear of bowel cancer. But when you consider in the past we would undertake a major operation that would require 10 to 14 days of recovery in hospital and probably two to four months off work. We can envisage that in the next five to ten years we would see the FLEX procedure deliver a treatment for early bowel cancer that will essentially be similar to a day case procedure with virtually no recovery. When you get diagnosed with bowel cancer, and like myself, you're told you've got two tumours in your colon. It's very, very frightening. Very frightening indeed. But when you actually get into St Mark's Hospital and you meet people like Professor Robin Kennedy, who talks to you and shows you and tells you what's happening and what they're going to do, they immediately inspire. You just know, wow, I'm in the right place here. And now I'm in the wonderful position that I do not have to think 
I'll worry about bowel cancer again. I am cured and I know I'm cured and they've made me feel really, really great. Thanks very much Sir Mark, it's wonderful. Please join us in partnership to create a future free from the fear of inherited bowel cancer, inflammatory bowel disease, intestinal failure, anal fistula, bowel cancer, by providing skilled, compassionate and knowledgeable care for patients.